Hey guys, first off, um, I apologize for being slightly delayed. Um, last thing I want to do is waste anyone's time in here. Um, so just uh, I want to I want to have a I want to uh, open up uh, with a few remarks and then I'll take some questions. So uh, first, just a couple go over the last 48 hours. What's What's transpired, uh, starting with Big Cat, uh, Leonard Williams. Um, first of all, just want to thank him. Um, he's been here four and a half year, years. I've only been here four and a half months, but I want to thank him. He's a consummate professional, um, great teammate, tough as nails, uh, durable guy. Um, and uh, he's, he's been a good player here for a long time. You know, the details on that, um, you know, that we, we received a lot of phone calls on Leonard. Um, so a few weeks ago, uh, received a phone call from Dave, um, had great conversations with him, ended up uh, getting something worked out yesterday. And um, we felt, uh, you know, it's difficult to say goodbye to a player um, with that much ability, and that much talent, that good of a person. Um, we felt that what we, um, the picks that we received for him um, were just, just uh, really gave us flexibility for the future. And uh, it's a great opportunity for Leonard and a fresh start for him. He's going to go. He's going to a great organization and uh, um, wish him wish him the best. Um, you know, it's been it's been a very busy 24 hours, as you guys can imagine. Um, we've uh, fielded a lot of calls um, on a lot of players. Some players has been public. Um, other players hasn't been public. Um, you know, one thing I will say is that on the players that that were leaked out today. Those, those weren't players that we were shopping. Um, but, you know, where I'm from and what I was taught is when a team calls you, you should always listen to what they have to say. So that's what we did. Um, we, we listened. We had good conversations. Um, there, was, uh, there was some productive conversations. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there was no fire sale. There's no garage sale going on with these players. And we value these guys a lot. And ultimately, the offers that we, we received for these players um, didn't equal the value that we, we have for them uh, within this organization. So, you know, just uh, just touch on a couple guys that were public. Um, uh, I had a chance to uh, reach out, uh, talk to Robbie. Uh, Robbie, after the deadline, had a chance to reach out to Le'Veon after the deadline. Good, productive conversations. Expecting to reach out to Jamal after the after the deadline, but. Uh, don't want to go, go into the specifics of deals that didn't happen, but um, just uh, just other than to say that um, the value that the value that uh, was offered wasn't didn't equal the value that we had for them in the organization. So um, that's that's that on the trade deadline. Um, as a team, uh, one and six, obviously not where we want to be. Um, we've got we've got a lot of work to do, and uh, not just coaching, not just players, not just personnel, everybody. So one thing I did before I came down and, and talked to you guys is I went through the notes from my last pressure with you guys before the Falcons game, or excuse me, the Saints game. And I was reading some of the words that I said, and there was amazing and outstanding. And those were things that I genuinely believed and, and I still believe. And I think you saw that carry over into the first two and a half quarters of the season um, when we had a 16 nothing lead in the opener. And... Um, what you saw after that was a team that got floored a little bit, uh, got knocked to the canvas, and you know, unfortunately, hasn't been able to pick themselves up. So, you know, that's that's part of a growing pot process is uh, as a team and as as an organization is to be able to handle adversity. Um, I think you guys have heard me talk about it before. Every game, um, every series, every year, there's um, great adversity that uh, that happens in this league. And the best teams are the teams that can handle any adversity. So I think that's. So I think we have a lot of work to do uh, when it comes to that uh, together as a group. Um, and then the last thing I'll say before I'll take questions. Um, obviously, I want to address the Kalechi situation. Obviously, uh, not an ideal situation uh, for for either party. Um, for me, uh, you know, personal uh, on a personal level. 2012, you know, I uh, had a chance to be with Kelechi, uh, win a Super Bowl uh, with Kelechi with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, so uh, just that was 2012, 2019. Um, we felt like this was the best decision um, for the organization and the team in regards to our decision. You know, I think we, we felt we did what was best for the team. You know, as an organization, you know, we respect, we fo follow the league's processes and procedures. Um, so 
just moving forward, you know, we're not going to comment on, on the specifics as it pertains to the situation. The one thing that I will clarify, um, the safety and well-being of all of our players, it's paramount. It's always a top priority for us, and uh, we have a great, great staff. They work together, and they make sure that that uh, care and safety happens for every player. So with that, I'll take some questions. So why were you amenable to trade Le'Veon? Amenable to trading with Le'Veon Bell. Um, again, like I said earlier, if a team calls, I'm going to listen. Um, and I just want to say, and I, and I said this to Le'Veon, there's, there's no, th probably one of our toughest, um, probably our player with the most workout. You see him every day at practice. I mean, one of, if not our best practice players. Um, so obviously um, there were a few calls and again, we just, uh, we, did, we didn't get the value that we thought was worth losing the player. Joe, is there such a thing as an untouchable player that you wouldn't take a call on? Yeah, I think there are untouchable players. You know, I think there are, especially when you're talking about franchise quarterbacks. Do you have a wit? Do you have a franchise quarterback? I think we do. I think we do. I think we have a young man that's 22 years old. He just finished his 17th game in the National Football League. And I think uh, we, see, we see him, we see the growth, we see the ups and downs. Um, but we see a guy that's made of the right stuff and a uh, warrior mentality. And uh, we got to take care of him. We got to take care of him as an entire organization. Um, you know, uh, playmakers, protection, everything. We got we to wrap our arms around him because I think you guys all saw what he could do uh, when, he had, uh, when he had that in the Dallas game. Joe, did, uh, you did you said that haven't spoken to him all yet. After the, did you talk to him before the deadline? Because there was some report that he kind of You know, I did have a chance to talk to Jamal last week. It was a great, great conversation, productive conversation. Uh, the details of that, I don't want to get in. I don't want to get into publicly, but um, no, it was a very productive conversation. Is Jamal part of the long term, long term vision here, Joe? Absolutely. I mean, again, I, I just want to reiterate: we were not shopping uh, any of those players that were talked about today. Um, you guys, you guys see Jamal every day. I mean, he wears the the C patch for a reason. The guy's an absolute warrior. He's the heartbeat of this team and, and this defense. And um, he's got the exact men mentality. And and I've told him from the beginning, from my first day here. I mean, he's a mission statement guy. He's a guy that I mean, when you when you talk about um, the traits you're looking for, that's Jamal. Is that so you semantics, though. When you say you're not shopping someone, when like you're talking to Dallas on the phone and listening to them make offers. I wouldn't say I'm interested in. I wouldn't say we're interested in trading the player until it gets to a point that would be compelling enough for me to take to Adam and Christopher and, and recommend doing that. Will you listen to those conversations when the season's over regarding Jamal? Like, will you feel a phone call about potentially trading him? Yeah, again, listen. Uh, like I said, we're we're. Where I grew up, you, you you listen to the phone calls. You listen to what people have to say when they call you. Joe, how do you think Adam has done to this point? Yeah, you know my my stance on Adam hasn't changed, Manisha. I mean, I think Adam's a, is a great coach and a great communicator, uh, and I think uh, we all have to do a better job, and I think we all have to look ourselves in the mirror and see uh, what we can do better uh, to help not only Adam but to help everyone on this team. And to that, just as a quick follow, um, how disappointed are you with the non-competitive nature of? So, I would not classify this team as non-competitive. Um, I think some of the scoreboards, when the score of the scoreboard, scoreboard is not um, not ideal. But this team does not lack competitiveness. Um, I see it every day at practice. Uh, these guys fly around. They practice hard. They care. Um, they love ball. Um, I think we need to execute better, play in, play out. I think we need to stack plays together, then stack drives together, then stack quarters together, then halves, then games, and then go on a run. And uh, right now the scoreboard might say that we're non-competitive, but we are, we are far from that. You spoke glowingly of Leonard. He's only 25, 26 years old. So if you feel that way about him, why not make an effort to try to sign him to a long-term deal? 
No, that, that was a discussion that we had, uh, Rich, and, um, you know, it just was, uh, it just was a, a, a simple uh, decision with the, with the conversations that we had with Dave, Kevin Abrams, and uh, our staff, uh, Adam, and then uh, our pro staff, and we, we decided that this, this deal was a unique opportunity to get two assets in the draft, and that would give, give us a lot of flexibility moving forward. Just to inquire young players. Joe, the, the, on the day of your introductory press conference, you mentioned how important the offensive line is in your vision. Uh, you made some moves in, in training camp to try to bolster the line with Khalil and Lewis. Obviously, it's been rough lately. Is there some way, is there anything you can do to help this offensive line going forward here with the rest of the season? Yeah. Um, First, on, on those two guys specifically, I mean, I mean, Alex come in has come in, and they, uh, you know, uh, he was a backup. He's been a starter. He's competed every day. Both those guys, uh, they love football. They uh, they push themselves through a lot of pain and injury uh, to be on the field. Uh, and both those guys are highly respected by their teammates and the team. Um, as far as helping these guys uh, in in the future, helping this unit, I think that's something. You know, like I said in other press conferences, we're we're gonna we're gonna try to. Uh, pursue uh, upgrading this team through every avenue. Uh, obviously, the trade deadline's done, uh, and so we won't have an opportunity to do that uh, through trade again until the start of the league year. Um, but there's still claims. Um, there's still ability to poach guys. So um, our pro scouting staff does a great job in uh, really stacking these prospects. Is this team going to go through another rebuild in the offseason? Uh, another rebuild? Uh, I mean, I, I would say that yeah, I, I would say that uh, you know, every team goes through a, a certain amount of rebuilding every off season. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to classify this as a you know a rebuild, tear down, however you want to say that. Uh, I think we're going to be looking to upgrade uh, multiple positions um, through the draft, through free agency, through every avenue I've described. Joe, how, Joe, how far away do you think this team is then from, from competing in terms for the playoffs for? Guys, I'm, I'm just going to go back to we need to put consecutive plays together, consecutive drives together. Like we, Our, our singular focus right now is beating the Miami Dolphins. So uh, I, I can't even answer that right now. Just, just, to go back, just to go back, when Simeon was hurt after Cleveland, right. you guys kind of had a decision there to make. Why, why go with Luke Falk, who really hadn't had any experience in the NFL versus signing for yeah, no, we had had those discussions. I think we felt that, you know, a uh, short week um, coming off the Monday night game, short week getting getting a, a veteran. You know, we, we had discussed some options, other some other veterans that had been in Adam's system before that could come in in a short week. Ultimately, um, for financial and other reasons, you know, we decided to go with Luke on the short week. Joseph, Sam has taken a step back uh, you know, the last couple weeks at least. What specifically about Adam gives you confidence that he is the right mentor to bring the best out of the young quarterback? Yeah, you know, I've I've seen I've seen Adam with young young quarterbacks in Chicago. Uh, I know I know what he can do uh, with the young with the young guys and veteran guys. I've seen that firsthand. Um, but I, I think we can all do a better job of of helping of helping not only the quarterback position but every 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 position. You know, from a personnel coaching whole organization standpoint. Can you, can you describe your relationship with Christopher and how he's been through this losing stretch? And also, um, you probably heard he made that comment on Sunday about how he knows the team. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. I didn't see that till today. You know, um, and I, you know, obviously I've been busy. I'm, I'm guessing that probably blew up. I, I haven't even been paying attention. You know, my take was, you know, um, he seemed, he seemed like a person that was like a lot of people in this building, um, passionate and frustrated about where we are at one and six. And um, I can tell you that uh, my my feelings on Christopher have not changed one bit. Um, you know, I uh, frankly, you know, he deserves better than one and six, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that we're not in this this position again in the future. Um, just an outstanding person, a uh, humble, genuine, authentic guy. And um, we're going to do everything in our power to uh, in improve where we are right now and make sure we never start this way again. Joe, were, you open, were you open to trading Marcus May? Was I open to trading Marcus May? Um, I would say that 
you know, um, again, I would I would take calls on every, any player. Um, so, did you take calls on him? I, I don't want to get into the, the specific details on that, but you know, I would I would feel I would feel those calls if they came about. Matt and then Andy. Joe, I know you said you didn't want to address the specifics of the assembly situation. Did you worry at all that the uh, public feud could kind of ripple out and affect what other players or people around the league kind of think of what's going on in this organization? Yeah, I don't. I really don't. With uh, young quarterbacks in the past, we've seen when they're under a immense amount of pressure, they can, you know, from, from opposing defensive line from the offensive line, we, they can lose confidence and it can kind of damage them going forward. So. How do you keep that from happening to Sam over the last nine games of the season? Yeah, we have to execute better. You know, I think that's that's on uh, everybody. And uh, you know that it, you bring you do bring up a good point. You know, you don't want a young quarterback taking too too many hits uh, because you you know that there's a ripple effect from that. So, like uh, I'll I'll go back to my original point. We all have to do a better job of uh, wrapping our, our arms around Sam and taking care of Sam. Take Bob and then Kevin and then we're done. You had talked about um, hey, frustration of Christopher and other people in the building. Jet fans for this team have gone through a lot over the last years, decades. The frustration level is it, it's been pretty well chronicled and it's, it's pretty intense right now. What can you say to them that will give them hope that this thing will eventually turn around and that this team will be worth rooting for? Um, I can tell them I, I understand their frustration. Uh, no one's more frustrated than me. I see the frustration on a daily basis. I see it from the fans after the game. Um, I see it from the people in this building. I can promise you that we come to work uh, every day, and there's a lot of people that just have a relentless work ethic, and they're here every day uh, scratching and clawing, um, trying to figure out ways to uh, make this team better. Um, whether it's through coaching, whether it's whether it's the players, I mean, we have players here today on their off day, grinding, getting extra rehab, um, getting extra tape. Um, there's a building of people here who care, and um, I can I can promise you that we we're doing everything in our power to make sure that we don't have a start like this again. Joe, I was going to also ask a little bit about the fans, but just to kind of double back on Bob's point. There's a fan base, a part of the fan base that says just fire Gase already because that's kind of what they're used to, big picture. Can you assure the fans that this, you and Adam will be able to grow together and build this team? Do you have any doubt in your mind that you guys are the right people here to finally fix this? Yeah, no, I, I have no doubts. I think there's some... I think there are some unforeseen circumstances that happen. I think every team goes through those, though, um, and so I don't want to make that ex an excuse. Uh, I think I think we've been through some rough patches early. Um, I can promise that uh, the leadership group of this team is men mentally and psychologically tough enough to, 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 to get through this and have the, and can handle adversity and persevere. Um, you know, we've just uh, we just have to do everything better. You know, and that starts with me. You know, I look myself, look at myself in the mirror and see what I can do better to help Adam, what I can do better to help Sam, what I can do better to help Eric. Like, we'll do whatever it takes. Thanks, guys. All right. Yeah.